Good morning, everyone. I'd like to begin by extending my thanks to Tarek Mitri and Zaina Arida for their gracious offer to host this symposium. And I really think it's fitting that we are holding this event in Beirut, which, in a sense, is a, the birthplace of MEPI. As Zaina has said, it began some nine years ago uh, with the idea that started fairly modestly around some notion of providing training to colleagues who are working with photographic collections in the region. However, MEPI has blossomed in many different directions since then, reflecting the vision and commitment of everyone who has participated in this initiative in some way. Zaina, along with our remarkable colleagues at the Arab Image Foundation, have helped to shape and drive this project in very many ways. And I know I speak for all the US partners, the University of Delaware, the Metropolitan Museum, and my own institution, the Getty Conservation Institute, when I say what a pleasure it has been to work with colleagues of such singular vision and dedication to an, an ideal. Our thanks to Zaina and our colleagues at the Arab Image Foundation and the Sursak Museum for making this event possible. I'm really delighted to be here this morning, back in the company of so many colleagues who have been associated with MEPI over the years. And I'm happy that we're able to welcome this morning so many new people who join us today and tomorrow to share some of the achievements that we um, have uh, managed to uh, put into effect over the past nine or so years. And also, more importantly, to explore possibilities for assuring the preservation of the extraordinary photographic collections of this region going forward. Now, it's often been said that photography is one of the most democratic of art forms. Indeed, one hardly needs to have any training at all to hold a camera, to point it at a subject, and to take a picture. And I think most of us in this room can probably reach into our bags or our pockets and take out a smartphone and start taking photographs. Uh, for better or, or worse, we live in the age of the selfie, when it seems that every moment and every mood is worthy of recording in a photograph. Why do we do this? Well, a wise man once said, we make photographs to understand what our lives mean to us. And I think this very simple answer is rooted in the very human and universal impulse to record our presence in place and time. Photographs capture and illuminate our history, dreams, and ideas. They are the mirrors of our lives and the past that we take. They record our joys and our sorrows. Photography allows travel through time and space. It dissolves borders and it opens vistas. And more than anything else, and more importantly, I think it opens both eyes and minds. And yet somehow, as remarkable as all this is, I frankly think that we take all this for granted, quite possibly because photography is so ubiquitous as if that photograph, like that person or that monument or that city that it portrays, will always be with us. And unfortunately, we know that that's not always true. While photographs can hold a moment, they too are vulnerable and can be lost, taking the tangible expression of our memories and our history with them. So we know that for that reason, we have to treasure and preserve what we have until the day, as all good custodians must do, we pass that heritage on to the generations that come after us so that they too can know something about our world and the people and events that shaped us. As Zaina has already said, this, is a, this day is a momentous one for many of us here as it marks the milestone in a project that has drawn upon the strengths and talents of so many individuals and institutions. And I know I speak for all the MEPI partners when I say that the work that we've been privileged to take part in over the past several years in cooperation with so many individuals and institutions 
across the Middle East and North Africa has been truly inspiring and exciting for all of us. Sometimes when I've described this project to other colleagues who've not been involved in MEPI and explain the ambitious program of activities and, and work that we've undertaken over the years, one of the first questions I hear is, why? Why should institutions like the Getty, which is based in Los Angeles, or the Metropolitan Museum, or the University of Delaware, which are based on the east coast of the United States, all of us so far from the region where this work is undertaken, why should we become involved in a project like MEPI? Well, I can give you some perspective from the uh, point of view of the Getty, my own institution. The, the Getty is the Conservation Institute is part of the J. Paul Getty Trust, one of the world's largest cultural organizations dedicated to the preservation, presentation, and interpretation of the visual artistic legacy. The mission and programs of the Getty Conservation Institute are international in scope, and we serve both the general public and a wide range of, of professional audiences to promote a, a vital civic civil society through an appreciation of the artistic legacy. We share with our US partners, the University of Delaware and the Metropolitan Museum, a deep belief in the humanistic values and the importance of intellectual and cultural exchange. We work together because although we are physically located in different cities, we actually do, in essence, come from the same place. That is from an understanding that the products and records of our lives, what we might call our heritage, is something of immense value and, and universal importance to all of us. To me, those words, a vital civil society, indicate the most important goal and purpose of our work, and in, indeed the work of any cultural or academic institution. Museums, libraries, archives, universities are important repositories of our cultural and intellectual resources. But they don't exist simply to be repositories and storehouses. Their real value can only be truly gauged by how and to what degree they are able to inform, shape, and advance the societies that surround them. When we can preserve and make accessible the most important cultural products of our societies, we build more than simply collections to put museums and archives. We build our people and a sense of who they are in the world. What we preserve also illustrates the values and purpose of our lives and our cultures. Heritage may be comprised of the relics of our past, but its true power and purpose lies in how it can shape our sense of ourselves in the present and how it informs our future. This symposium marks the end of one phase of MEPI and the beginning of another. And you'll be hearing a lot about the accomplishments of, of MEPI over the next two days, including from, you'll be hearing from several people who've been in, taking part in MEPI's workshops or, or related projects. And I think you'll be impressed by the amount of work they've been able to achieve over the years. And while MEPI was launched with, uh, under the, the auspices of four partners, the Arab Image Foundation, the Metropolitan Museum, the University of Del Delaware, and the Getty, in fact, this is a much broader partnership. Over 50 institutions have taken part in some aspect of MEPI. These are the institutions which committed one or more members of their staff to participate in MEPI's workshops and other activities. We recognize that preservation budgets may be small and that staff may be um, pulled in many different directions at once. But we've seen over the years that MEPI participants often rise to these challenges and create their own innovative solutions tailored to their own collections, their own resources, and their own institutional context. And we've all been very impressed by that indeed. 
However, we must take a very clear view of the challenges that lie before us. The eventual effectiveness of MEPI and the participants who've been involved in it really does depend upon the support from their institutions, but also from the support that they might receive from the governmental entities that oversee culture and heritage, as well as the NGOs and private funding sources that can assist in this effort. There is a role here for a diverse range of institutions and individuals, ranging from scholars, directors, policy and decision makers, collectors, everyone who has a love for or a responsibility for cultural heritage. All of these individuals and organizations can form a very powerful alliance in support of preserving photographic collections of this region. This symposium, unfortunately, also marks a moment when three of the four original MEPI partners, the Getty, the Metropolitan, and the University of Delaware, will conclude our formal partnership with MEPI. Now, I wouldn't say that we are going to be completely out of the picture, because I think for all of us, MEPI has been a, a part of our lives for so long that, that we will always want to participate and support MEPI in some fashion. But it is time to hand over the leadership of this project to the people who can best see it to its next phase which is the people and organizations of this region. I know I speak for all the MEPI partners when I say how much affection and respect we have for the colleagues and institutions that we've been working with for so many years. We asked a lot from you, and you always rose to the challenges. I believe there is a simple reason for this, and that is because we Although we all come from so many different cities and different backgrounds, in essence, we really do come from the same place. From the shared understanding of why the remarkable photographic legacy of this region must be treasured and preserved. Thank you. <laughs>